Are you looking for truth from God's Word that you can understand and apply to your life? You'll find it today on Make It Clear with Dr. Stan Pons. Listen now as Stan makes it clear. Hi, this is Stan Pons, and I want to welcome you to the program called Make It Clear. You know, this program is really designed with you in mind. Most of our programs are really Bible teaching, verse by verse through Scripture, but with a lot of life application. However, occasionally we invite people for an interview because these are people that I have found have a profound influence and effect on America and the world for Jesus Christ. So we do interviews, and we've had all kinds of interviews. We've had theologians like Norm Geisler on our program. We've had Bible teachers and Bible preachers on our program. We've gone all over the music scene, from the Gettys who write hymns for today, and then today to a new friend that I have met that has partnered with us on a very special music video. It has a rap connotation to it, but it is outstanding. And you'll have an opportunity to hear that music video in just a little bit. Well, I want to welcome to our program today, one that you may have heard and maybe heard about, but perhaps now you're going to get to know more personally. And this is my new friend, Domingo Gaitan. And I want you to be with us because he is one who has done a lot of music for movies, for episodes in television programs that you have seen. He writes it, he performs it, he works with others. In addition to all of that, he's written his own movie and produced it and worked in that as well. And he's got new projects on all the time. He loves the Lord with all of his heart, soul, and mind. And I want you to hear his story. Now, his story is his, God's story in his life. And see what there might be in it that could influence and impact your life as well. So I want to welcome to our program today a very special friend, Domingo Guyton. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Dr. Stan Ponce. This is uh, just, uh, I don't even have words. It's, it feels so good to just be here and to be partner with, with you all with the traffic movie. So thank you so much for having me on. It's a great thing for you to be with us. So let's find out a little bit because most of our folks know that we're a program that's designed to help people come to faith alone in Christ and then to go on to become fully obedient worshipers of him. And a lot of times they want to know about the guest's faith journey. How do they come to faith alone in Jesus Christ? So tell us a little bit about how you came to faith in Christ. Would you do that, Domingo? Yeah, it was, it's, it was a, I, I grew up in Boston um, and I grew up in a home that was a Christian home. My grandmother and my mom, they took me to church every week and we went to, you know, Sunday school and went to choir practice and all of that good stuff. And so I did that for, you know, most of my, upbringing years of course once I got to be a teenager I started to rebel against some of what was put into me and I rebelled pretty hard and then I went to college where I was able to be out of the house so once I was out of the house I could really just turn up the rebellion heat mm -hmm. and I rode that way for a good amount of time probably to about 26 and the Lord just started pulling and tugging at my heart. And there's I mean, several situations that I had gotten into where I knew that there was a God. And then every, all those vacation Bible schools and all those Sunday school lessons and grandma's teachings and mom, every, everything started to come back. And so I gave my life to the Lord at age 28 and, um, and started walking it at age 29. So it's been a, a good journey. That is a great journey, but it's also a great testimony. You know, some of our listeners are really identifying with you in the word hope. You've got parents and grandparents who have felt like, I've I built into this kid, but now my kid is gone and he's not walking yeah. with the Lord. And is it ever going to happen again? And you know, Domingo, I'm hearing stories like yours all the time where that it seems like they have drifted and they'll never come back. And then that son or that daughter has what I'm going to use the term come to Jesus moment. And that's where the Lord does something to bring them back to the fact that they're sinners. They need a savior. Jesus Christ is the Lord who died and rose again and faith alone in him. And then because of that, they said, since the Lord 
saved me. I love him and I want others to know about him. Amen. So that's where you are. But tell us a little bit about all this shaping you have in your life regarding music. You know, you've done the film stuff. You've written a lot, a lot of music and you're really involved in that. I know that doesn't only define you, but tell us, how did you get involved in the whole music ministry, music industry? I have to give it up to those Saturday mornings. I, you know, be sitting home watching Hulk Hogan and, you know, Jake the Snake Roberts and, and Junkyard Dog watching, you know, WWF wrestling. And mom is like, turn that TV off. We're going up to um, choir practice. And it's like, what? Choir <laughs> practice? I want to watch Hulk Hogan. No. And so, but I have to give it up to the church. They instilled in me um, the love of music, um, going to those rehearsals, practicing every Saturday. And then I started playing drums. So the drums came and the drums really helped me to uh, lock in to, you know, sort of the background of the music. So I could, you know, I can sing, I can harmonize, and I can also uh, play drums. And, I, and that comes from the church. And so when I went off to college, I connected with guys who were in the hip hop industry. And I started making music at age 17 and started recording. I, I went in originally to program some drums, but then started writing raps and started doing it secular. And I was doing it secular from age 17 to about 26 or 27, almost 10 years of doing it secular. And then, you know, I was interesting. I was playing drums for a group called Tavares. There are more than a woman. Heaven must be missing an angel. So I was, mm -hmm. I was their drummer from age from year two thousand to two thousand six. And I remember being on the plane with Butch Tavares. I let him hear one of my singles, and he said, he said, "Man, this is a hit." Mm -hmm. He said, "You don't have to swear. Why are you swearing so much?" And I came off that plane, and I wrote my first raps without swearing. So it's been a process. It's a long story. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I couldn't give it all to you, but it's, it's been a long process. You know, it's good that you share that because physical growth doesn't happen overnight. You don't come out of your mother's womb and then bingo, you're a full grown adult. It's a process. Yeah. Spiritual growth is the same way. You come to faith in Jesus Christ, but our spiritual maturity is a process. It's not an instant thing. It's not a sprint. It's a long distance run. And what you're saying right now is that when all this was beginning to happen, you began to change and you began to grow. And as mature as you are now, and as mature as I think I am now, I know that as I walk with the Lord, that maturity is only going to blossom and we're going to grow more and more and more and more. So I thank you for sharing that. Another thought I thought, you know, there was a time when drums were really forbidden from most churches, you know, some churches still don't use any instrumentation, you know, and here you are, your mom kind of let you do the drum thing. Little did she know that there was a seed being planted in your mind, a passion, a desire for music. And now your music, has come to a point where that your words, along with the music, but your words, you want to have a profound impact on the betterment of a person's life, not just crying at an angst of how bad the world is, you know? And I appreciate that because when we leave listening to your music, we're better people because of it. So talk a little bit about your Christian music. I know it's, it's a rap. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but, but tell me about how it morphed into doing Christian music. Good. So again, I started 1994. I did my first recording and it was all about drug, you know, drugs and women, sex and, you know, just a lot of stuff like that. And around 2003, I wrote my first rap that was about uplifting the community, talked about love. And I wasn't talking about God or Christ or anything because I wasn't walking with the Lord. But I said I started writing music. There would be no swearing and it would be uplifting, uplifting the women. So I started that and then the Lord saved me in 2003 and then I began walking it in 2004. Mm -hmm. And once I started walking it in 2004, I sort of said, you know, I'm done. And believe it or not, it was a Muslim brother. It was a Muslim brother of mine who made music. And I said, hey man, I'm walking with the Lord and I'm done with this hip hop stuff. And he said, man, you got a message, man, that we all need to hear. You got a message. This is a Muslim guy. And he knows I'm walking with the Lord. He said, mm -hmm. he said, you got a message, man. The world needs to hear. I'm going to send you eight songs, eight instrumental tracks. And I want you to write this, what, what your new, your new faith that you have, right, right about it. 
-hmm. And that's what I did. I started, I wrote a song, um, uh, run with me. Mm -hmm. And, and it was just about the Lord and, and run with me. You know, you know what I used to do, but look at what I'm doing now for God. And that was sort of the, and I, and so I wrote those eight songs and that's sort of how I started. And that was 2005 and I've been doing it since. Well, folks, if you just tuned in, you're listening to Make It Clear. My name is Stan Pons. I'm your host. But our special guest today is a guy that I'm glad that you can hear his testimony and how the Lord's been using him. His name is Domingo Guyton. Now, I'd encourage you to go to his website, because on his website, you're going to hear how the Lord put him in places of influence in the music industry, but also in the movie industry. So you want to go to Domingo, just as it sounds, Guyton, G-U-Y-T-O-N, Guy Tun. He's a ton of a guy, all right? So we have right here, Domingo Guyton, Dot com. It's easy to remember. Go to the website and then go through the website. It is easy to, to navigate and it'll give you a plethora of information to help you be inspired, be informed, but also to use it as a ministry, perhaps in other people. So I appreciate all of that. You know, it's interesting. You said this Muslim guy said, You have a message. I've got the music. You've got the message. So you now take your message and put it to my music. What that's telling me is inside his heart, there was a void, there was an emptiness that was there, and it wasn't being filled or his scratch, his itch wasn't being scratched, but you had a message. The message was biblical. And now that was filling it through the words that you shared to help him. And I just want to thank you for using that. Now, since you've done your music here, particularly in the Christian film and, and music industry, you write words and those words are the kind of words that impact people's lives. But the style is rap. Do you only do rap or is that just your primary music? Primary. Primary is rap. It's what I've always recorded. So I do record some other gospel. I do record um, like what would be considered rhythm and praise or R&P or, you know, sort of R&B sounding stuff. I mean, anything that I do typically has a positive message, positive message, but it always uplifts, you know, the Lord. And so um, if it's rap, I'm, I'm going to be giving people the problem, but I'm also going to aim people and, and force them to take a look at the solution, which is Jesus Christ. And you know, that's why we had you be a part of our ministry in the aspect of writing the music, the words for our very special movie that we have called Traffic. Now, we have a broad ministry with media and radio and television and movies, and we also have speakers out there. We're developing our women's ministry, so we're a pretty big ministry. But the focus I want to focus on now is the area of our film. And we've asked you to write a rap song because we put together a short film. It's about almost 30 minutes when you put everything else together with it, but it's on a very hot topic, a tragic topic, a topic that people will hear a little bit about, but they don't like to talk much about. And it's the topic called traffic. It's the topic and issue of human trafficking. And, you know, we think it's, well, it's going to be the girls. Well, we're finding that human trafficking truly is of nearly all ages and the different sexes. So it's just taking humans, snatching them away, holding them captive, marketing them for a profit, usually in the sex industry that's out there, because that's really where it's motivated by, and the amount of money. The issue is also that it's not just isolated to some foreign country that has an open society for sex. It can happen anywhere, and it can also happen almost in your own backyard. And so the script was written. It's turned into a high drama because it's very intense. It's not something you may want to show to a younger elementary school child, but at the same time, it br bridges into the awareness of it as well as into how we can use this to prevent human trafficking as we show it to young people and adults as well. So you wrote that, but the reason you wrote that is because we requested you to do that. Why, why did you want to write a rap song for a movie uh, that's on trafficking? Well, my brother Cameron Arnett, who played in the movie, yes, he reached out to me. He said, hey, man, I'm part of this movie, man. I think you could do an excellent job with the music. So um, I said, hey, send me over a treatment. Send me over the info of what the movie's about. And um, and once I heard it, I was actually driving. I was up near Philadelphia filming a, a slavery museum. And I was on the highway. And I remember listening to the music. And I was writing, you know, not writing because, you know, you shouldn't be writing while you're driving. But I, you know, a lot of times 
when you have long periods of time in the car, you'll be able to brainstorm. So I was listening to, I called my buddy, um, Chris Theodat, he's in Boston. He made the music because I said, man, I'm looking for a track that kind of has this feel, man. And he he sent me over the music. I said, oh, this is perfect. So I'm driving, you know, I'm, I'm driving through New York and going up to Connecticut, go, going into Boston. And, and I pretty much get the feel for what I want to record. And and um, and and some of the words, I got the, the rhythm going. I said, oh, this is going to be good. And then my cousin, Andre, uh, he was the one um, singing on the chorus. So I went to his house. And since I had been in Philadelphia with all the film and we were recording audio, I had all my audio equipment with me in the car. So I brought the stuff to Andre's house, set it up right there in Dorchester. And we recorded him singing it, um, singing the chorus. And and I recorded my raps there, sent it to camera and he checked it out. He said, hey, a couple of tweaks here. I sent him a new one. He said, oh yeah, this is, this is hitting. I'm going to send this over. So he sent it and, and you guys accepted it. So I, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. I have to tell you, I I knew this was happening in the background because the team was working on it, but I got the final version of it uh, a day or so ago. And last night in preparation for this interview, I said, I'm going to go ahead and listen to it. Now, I assumed it'd be rap because this is going to connect to that kind of audience. And I get that. And I'm not like much into rap but I value what it can do. And so I don't want to put God in the box. Amen. So I'm sitting there watching and listening to this thing. I have to tell you, it's so touched me by the passion, the wow. words, the way they're put together, how easy it was to follow the thinking of the message that you were sharing. And then behind all of that message was video clips from the movie that was flashing before us that added even more impact. And I'll call it surround sound, Technicolor, all that stuff that went with the video. I was in tears and I called my wife, you got to see this. I then wrote to my sons and I said, you got to watch this. This video is an award-winning one because it really puts it all together in an accurate state. Amen. So I want to thank you for working with us with that and then giving us this opportunity to use that particular video. So if I understand correctly, you wrote the words and some of the rhythm i'm sure with it and then you had your friend do the vocal on it or did both of you do the vocal how did that i work? did so i i had i had asked him to jump on and do the singing i wrote it all mm -hmm. um my cousin andre he did some of the singing and then i did some of the singing too so we both paired up with the singing part uh, but it primarily was him he, he primarily did most of the singing all right. I could only imagine if I was in my car, in my home, listening to this particular uh, interview, they're all saying, well, when can I see this? All right. Well, for a million dollars to make it clear, we can see it. No, no, no. We'll let you see it for free. And we're going to let you be able to see that by going to our, our special website for that. And you can look at it. This would be makeitclear.tv make it clear TV. And you can see that video, no charge for that. We want you to be able to look at it. But some of you are saying, but I, I didn't get it all of that. Can I at least hear it? So we're going to pause the, the radio program right now, this, this podcast. And I wanted to shut down my speaking and Domingo. And I want you to listen carefully to the words, but do go to the website, make it clear TV. And then you'll be able to see this video in a very special way. So listen right now to this very special and impact music video by Domingo Guyton. <laughs> Her name's Anna. Middle school girl doesn't realize the lies in its crew world Looking for love in all the wrong places Social media, fake names and wrong faces But she met a dude, he was real smooth Communicating so well, got her in the mood The mood to keep it a secret from those who Really loved her, the ones you're not supposed to Texting back and forth in the late night Picking out the outfit to wear on the date night She tells all her friends she's got an older guy They were excited for her and then they told her bye Waiting in the park for her new friend he doesn't show up so what will she do then nothing she got snatched real quick this is the devil's tactic to have a trafficked watch out ooh, for the devil's tactics i'm just trying to prevent you from being trafficked you're getting older too girl and real attractive i'm just trying to prevent you 
from being trapped. Family's jacked up. When is she coming home? Regretting the decision to get her a phone. What can we do now? We feel all alone. Baby girl's missing. Is God on the throne? How could this happen to us? We had it all together. Sticking tighter than legs and pants of leather. And we get the word. She is still alive. Police rescue her with some other lives. Go to court now and face the perpetrator. Trying hard to not think about hurting them later. DA trying to say my daughter's confused. Saying she was the cause of her own abuse. The judge is the layman. The verdict came in. And the fool's guilty. We screaming out amen. Hands clap. Leap screams. A few backflips. The praise we gave for our daughter was trafficked. Watch out. Ooh, for the devil's tactics. Said I'm, trying, I'm just trying to prevent you. Oh, yeah. From being yeah, trafficked. Watch out. Ooh, being trafficked. You're getting older too. Watch out. Watch out, ooh, I'm yeah. just trying to prevent you From being trapped Thank you for listening to that. And if you've been with us for the whole program, you're hearing a particular rap song written by the person that I'm interviewing right now, a person who is committed to Christ, but is also committed to taking the message of Christ global, primarily through song, but also through the things that he has written and has acted in. And who is that? Again, that's Domingo Guyton. And you can go to his website at domingoguyton.com. That's Domingo, G-U-Y-T-O-N.com and see his ministry. Now, those of you that are only listening to this broadcast, what you can't see is he's got this bright red shirt on and on it, he has the words born again. B is in the graphics of the Boston um, Red Sox, and then the A is of the major league team in Atlanta, the Boston, I mean, the Atlanta Braves. But I like that he has born again. He's not afraid to go public with his faith by what they hear and by what they see. And one of the things I thought was cool, and I'm going to point you to his website for this, look at it. You got to see all the stuff that's on it. But one thing that I've never seen anywhere before was on his website, he's got this beautiful gift basket filled with stuff. Now go to the site, see what the, what's in there. But it's born again. And I got thinking, I imagine he put this together so that people could get this basket if they trusted Christ as Savior. In other words, if you have a friend or a relative that came to faith alone in Christ and you want to celebrate that they got born again, it's like a baby gift, you know, like a baby shower gift. But for them, it's a spiritual baby gift where they got born again. You give them that basket. But another way you can use that is give it to a friend that you really like, and it just says born again on it. That'll be a wonderful conversation opener for you then to get into the gospel and how to share the message. And if you need literature to go with it, you can contact us at makeitclear.org, and we'll help you with that. Or you can contact uh, Domingo if you want that as well. So, Domingo, I really want to thank you for that. Tell me some of the projects that you're working on now for the Lord. What, what are you working on now? Well, let me, before we run from the video, I have to give respect due to my good brother, John Bain, because it was his editing in that video that put it all together. So I want to say thank you to him. Um, you know, we, we had a good relationship. He sent me over an edit. I said, hey, this, you know, we went back and forth a few times, but he, he had it knocked out and that was awesome. So got to give him his credit for, for what he did. Um, and thank you for that. So as far as me and what I have going on right now currently is, you know, I'm just recording music. So I still have, I'm recording music with my daughters, um, teaching them. My daughter just finished up a book. So we just put the book out. And you're reminding me, I got to put her book on the website because I don't have it on there yet. <laughs> um, but she's been selling out. She's all mad now. She's nine. She's currently nine. And she's upset because her hand hurts from all the, all the signatures that she has to write and all the books she sold. So now she doesn't really want to sell books anymore because she done sold over a hundred and her hands hurting. <laughs> Well, they can go to your website. What's the name of the book? Um, the Adventures of Jenny Fiddleston. It's a uh, you know about fairies and stuff. You know something that nine year old girls do. But mm -hmm. people are loving it and they're supporting it and it's been awesome. Um, but besides being here with my daughters and serving my daughters, serving my wife, serving my mom who also lives with us, um, I'm recording music and I've been working on a feature film mm -hmm. and the feature film is uh, told, tells the life of Jesus through the eyes of Peter. Mm -hmm. And I've been working on this for 14 years. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a, it's been a process. We, we did a short film 
in 2012. We, we put it through film festivals in 2013. I started working on the script 2014. That lasted six years of just writing the script. So we just finished the script October 2020. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to the next phase. And so it's in the Lord's hand. So, you know, keep that in prayer, please. Is it titled um, yet? Or is that, you just have a working title for it? Yeah. The short title that we had was YTF, uh, which, which stands for yesterday, today, forever. Hebrews 13, eight. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. So that was the short title. The new version might be titled yesterday, today, forever, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, yeah. So keep that in prayer. I am so glad. I want to thank you again for being with us today. You have done a great job helping us to understand a little bit about the importance of music, the influence it can have on others, your own story that's his story in your life, but also to thank you publicly again for what you have done. For those of you that are with us, my name is Stan Pons. I'm the host here of Make It Clear. Our guest today was Domingo Guyton, and you can go to his website, domingoguyton.com. Our topic was the music that they have put together specially for our movie called Traffic that will be released soon. And some of you already are seeing that. So if you haven't, I would like for you to get a copy of it. You can by going to our website. It's makeitclear.org makeitclear.org. Very easy to remember, makeitclear.org. Then go to the marketplace and you will see the DVD of our film called Traffic. You can use it as a conversation opener. You can use it as a teaching tool. I will tell you it is very high drama. We also want you to know that if you'd like to listen to the video, the music video that goes with this film, then you can certainly go to makeitclear.tv. I want to thank again you and your cousin who put this together, and of course, John Bain, who has been a part of what we've been doing regarding the music video. He's taken the clips from the video, and he's put it into this very special music video, and he did an outstanding job. You have to see it, but while you're watching this, not just the quality and the good rap and the music and the the scenes i want you to remember that while you're watching that another person is being snatched up others are being held captive others are being sold and others are actually having only god knows the depravity to those people and our job is to help them be rescued from that rescued from being trafficked and let's remember we're held hostage not just humanly physically but we can be hostage by our sin and that Jesus Christ says, I have come to give you life and to give you more abundantly. In other words, to release you from being the captive of Satan. And if you'd place your faith alone in Jesus Christ, you can have everlasting life. And I pray that you will. So again, to you for doing the rap song and doing all the music for that special presentation of our traffic movie, for John Bain for helping that out. For Doug Stroop, who's the director of our Make It Clear studio, go to makeitclearstudio.com and you'll be able to know more about all the film projects that we're doing. And Domingo, I want to invite you to come back with us sometime. We'd love to hear what God is continually doing in your life. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much there, Dr. Ponce. And thank you, John Bain. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Cameron. I mean, you all just, uh, you know, allow me to do what God has, you know, called me to do. So thank you again. God bless you all, and remember to make it clear. You're listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It is the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. Or you can mail your gift to Make It Clear, P.O. Box 607901, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Thank you for helping us make it clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please send us an email at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear. Thank you.